before I say anything, I'd like all of you to pull out your phones. Look at this thing that you keep in your pocket every day. Think about any problem you may have with your phone. Maybe it glitches, maybe it lags, maybe it has bad battery life. The point is that think of something about this phone that you don't like. Now I want you to realize that the average smartphone is 4,000 times lighter than the computer used to send men to the moon. The average smartphone is 120 million times faster than the Apollo guidance computer. And we keep it in our pockets every day and take it for granted. The world's first computer, the ENIAC, was first completed in 1946. It took three years to finally finish, and it took up 167 square meters. That's bigger than the average house in Denmark. It took humans 200,000 years to build the first computer. Granted, we were being chased around by wild beasts for a good portion of the time, so we didn't always have time to worry about building the latest iPhone that could order pizza at a whopping speed of three seconds instead of three and a half. But comparing the time it took to build the first couple of computers to the time it took to innovate them to such a great extent, we can truly see how far humans have come. I come from the era of dial-up and phones that are mounted to the wall. Let me tell you a story about my little brother. My little brother is over a decade younger than I am. Now, he's known nothing but high-speed Wi-Fi, ultra-fast iPhones, and TV screens so clear they're indiscernible from human vision his whole life. One day, he was using a smartphone, right? And he was going at it. No one knows their way around that thing like he does. Eventually, it dies. And he comes to me, and he was like, Mama, the phone's dead. And so he just expects me to plug it into the charger, and everything's OK. But my charger was broken at the time. So I tell him, I'm sorry, but my charger is broken. I'll get a new one tomorrow. And for the first time ever, he'd felt it. He'd felt that feeling we've all felt before when we don't have anything to do. He'd felt boredom. And it was hilarious. Eventually, he goes outside to watch TV because he can't handle the boredom anymore. No more than five minutes later, he comes back to me and he says, Omar, the TV is broken. And at this point, I'm scared. I'm picturing the worst case scenario. So I go outside and I look at the TV for a couple minutes and I don't see what's wrong. I ask him what's wrong with the TV. And he says, look. And he goes up to the TV and starts swiping, expecting something to happen. But nothing does. And that's the story of how I had to explain to my brother how a remote works for five minutes. Anyway, if you look at the growth of technology, it's honestly baffling. I mean, in less than 100 years, we went from dreaming of having a computer that could do our simple second grade level math for us to having computers so fast that it's never been easier to brag about your kids to literally everyone you know on Facebook. Now, the rate of evolution of technology has only increased over time. So people have been working on making sure that computers are getting more advanced. Humans have spent centuries, if not millennia worth of hours, to make sure that computers become more advanced. But why? Why do we want computers to be so advanced? Why do we want technology to be so advanced? The answer is simple. It's because we're lazy. Why walk to the grocery store when you can drive there? Better yet, why drive to the grocery store when you can be driven there by your self-driving car? Better yet, why even go to the grocery store when you can order the groceries on the phone? Actually, why not just order the groceries online? Why not completely remove humans from the process and have an automated drone that delivers the groceries to your doorstep? This goes on forever, because as long as humans are alive, we'll always look for the easy way out. It's in our nature to want things to be as convenient as possible. The thing is, although we're lazy, we were all born with an innate sense of completionism. So the reason we built the first calculator was because we didn't want to do math ourselves. But after a while, when we saw that it could go far beyond simple functions, like addition and subtraction, we decided to make it more advanced. OK, it can do addition and subtraction. Let's make it able to do multiplication and division. OK, it can do multiplication and division. Let's make it able to use exponents. OK, now that we've made it so advanced that it can use any algebraic function, let's make it able to use trigonometric functions. This goes on forever because of the way our brains work. You see, 
Dopamine is the foundation of our brain's reward mechanism. What happens is that every time you do something good, we get a little shot of dopamine. And that little shot of dopamine gives us this extraordinary feeling we can't live without. So we keep going, just to get a little bit more. But no amount's ever enough. When we built the first computer, we got that little shot of dopamine. And that little shot of dopamine brought us to today. We live in a world dominated by technology, where people thrive to make something better, anything better. Everywhere you look, someone's trying to make a new faster car, or a new better computer, or a new more advanced device. And the best place to do so is in the UAE. See, technology is the past, the present, and the future. Technology allows us to grow and allows us to prosper. And the rulers of the UAE know this very well. I mean, look everywhere in the UAE, technology is number one. Let's say the first airport to have e-gates. Or maybe the first plane to fly around the world using nothing but solar power. Or maybe one of the longest metro tracks in the world. And so on and so forth. The list doesn't end because anyone who is willing to give their new ideas a shot and who has the work ethic to make things happen is taken in with arms wide open. This is because they know that you won't always need the pilot because of self-piloting planes, but you'll always need the person who creates the self-piloting plane. You won't always need a driver because of self-driving cars, but you'll always need the person who creates a self-driving car. You won't always need people who follow instructions, but you'll always need people who create because creation is an instinct and a characteristic that's exclusive to man. Because creation is an instinct that is exclusive to man. See, you could be the difference. You could be the change. You could be the difference between Windows XP and Windows 10. You could be the difference between us having normal lives or us having bionic limbs and flying cars. You could be the reason that we no longer need smartphones because of mind-controlled interfaces. The resources are there. You don't need gimmicks. You don't need a large sum of money to invest in your own project. You don't need a fancy education. Everything is there for you. All you need is hard work. Nothing is stopping you. The only thing stopping you is you. Thank you.